Well, another very warm welcome back, all my vintage dirt bike loving YouTubers, and thanks again for retuning to Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV. Now, as you know, we uh, always try and uh, take a look at some of those old vintage racers from a way back in the past and uh, try and decipher just exactly what these old bikes were like to ride uh, way back in that uh, golden era of what they called then uh, scrambling. Now, with regards my subscriber uh, total, I think we're heading quite nicely towards that uh, elusive 13,000 uh, total. I think we're only about 400 subscribers away from that uh, 13,000 mark. So thanks to each and every one of you out there for your continuing uh, support of my channel. OK, coming up next, another old uh, vintage racer from our past. And uh, this time round, we're going to take a look at Billy Pentland's 1974 Can-Am 250 MX-1. Now this particular 1974 Can-Am 250MX1 uh, actually used to belong to the late Ian Robertson who raced this bike uh, to great success during 2017 and 2018. Now the bike's current owner and rider Billy Pentland uh, was a very close friend of Ian's and he purchased the bike from Ian's estate and he now races uh, the machine as a second uh, race bike to his YZ490 Yamaha. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the bike is a 1974 250 MX1, and uh, this particular model is called the TNT version, which uh, stood for track and trail, but basically, these TNTs had the exact same uh, frame as the motocross models, although uh, there were uh, subtle differences in the porting and compression of that uh, two-stroke uh, Rotax engine. But these early uh, TNTs had a very short production run and they were soon replaced by the qualifier models in 1976. Now, Can-Am initially began by uh, building a 125 and 175 version of the MX-1s in 1974, and then they soon added this 250 machine to that uh, year's uh, production lineup. But riders back in the day still say that uh, these Can-Ams had uh, quite good power from that Rotax motor, and they handled uh, reasonably well, although uh, the front and rear suspension it wasn't uh, the best. Now, if you're up to speed with your Can-Am models, you may remember some of the later versions of this bike, like the dreaded MX3250, which of course was nicknamed the Black Widow. Now, not because they were super fast and super agile on the track, but mainly because they were such an evil handling bike on the racetrack. And I'm sure it was the legendary racer that Jeff Smith who actually hung that title on that uh, MX-3, uh, saying that it was so dangerous that it was going to kill somebody uh, someday. So that's probably why you never ever see one of those uh, black Can-Ams on the racetrack these days, which of course is uh, basically similar to our 250 here, but of course that model would have been decked out in a black uh, tank, and I think it was red plastics, but uh, they're still very highly collectible if you can find one uh, these days. But uh, anyhow, back to our early 1974 MX250, uh, which uh, when you think about it, didn't have a long existence in off-road uh, racing as Can-Ams were only really made over the short space of uh, just a few years, which uh, I think they started in 1973 and by 1976 were already realising that they couldn't compete with the might of the Japanese uh, Big Four. And I think it was in the late 1980s that uh, they stopped making uh, motorcycles altogether and uh, just to concentrate on the more lucrative uh, niche markets of building uh, snowmobiles and ATVs, which at that time were the bread and butter of the Bombardier uh, company. Now, the motor on these 74 250s was a Rotax 250 two-stroke, which, uh, as you know, 
was a superbly powerful engine for such a small uh, 250 and it had uh, magnesium engine casings as well and of course that unique uh, rotary disc valve induction system whereby a rotating fibre disc on this left side of the crankshaft uh, rotated past an inlet track opening in the crankcase and every time it passed that uh, particular opening it suction was then created and the fuel-air mixture was then fed into the combustion chamber. But as I recall, these MX-1s had a 5-speed close uh, ratio gearbox, which uh, riders used to comment on them being a bit uh, notchy when they were shifting gears. And I'm sure the smaller-engined MX-1s of the, the 125 and 175s had a 6-speed uh, wide ratio uh, gearbox, although I think originally these 250s would have had a Bing carburetor to feed it uh, with its fuel and not this uh, Japanese Makuni that Billy has uh, here. But uh, overall, these Rotax engines were pretty good if you looked after them and uh, by all accounts were rugged and reliable. And uh, that's probably one of the reasons that they were used on many other bike manufacturers' machines across Europe during the 1970s and 1980s. But back in 1974, these Can-Am 250s would have had a set of beater forks on the front end and have no reason to suspect that uh, these that are fitted to Billy's bike are not the factory originals. But of course, later Can-Ams uh, would have had Italian-made Marzocchi's uh, fitted, but uh, these old beater units uh, would have given you about six inches of travel at the front end. Now once more, drum brakes for 1974 and these old school uh, drum brake uh, systems, to be fair, were really just for ornamental purposes only because uh, these weren't the best stoppers for a 1970s dirt racer and uh, when the going got tough, they did suffer badly from overheating and then of course uh, brake fade, which I suppose almost all of these old drums uh, systems did suffer from uh, to a certain extent, but the bike's swing arm and the chassis uh, were still pretty good and the complete bike, I think, at the time only weighed around the £240 mark. Now again, this plastic uh, polyethylene fuel tank held around, I think it was just under 10 litres of fuel, which was uh, more than enough to keep that little Rotax engine going uh, with its fuel. But the ill-fated MX-3 Black Widow that we spoke about earlier on would have had a black uh, tank with uh, red graphics going down the side. So if you ever come across a barn find Can-Am MX-3 Black Widow, then uh, please snap it up. Uh, but for safety's sake, uh, don't bother uh, putting it uh, on the track. Now this little MX-1's exhaust expansion chambers is the real McCoy from 1974 and the original part, although uh, this rear tailpipe is unfortunately just a pattern replacement because uh, to be fair parts aren't that easy to come by these days for these very rare uh, 1970s race bikes. Now as we head towards the uh, back end of the machine now, this bike's rear shocks are uh, once again replacement units from NJB uh, shocks in the UK and uh, as you remember NJB was started way back in 1990 by Norman Blakemore who uh, took early retirement after working for more than 24 years at Girling whereby he then uh, set up on his own selling and manufacturing these very high quality NJB suspension units. But back in the 1970s, these MX-1s and many of the other can models of that time were being sold in the UK by Andover Norton Limited and uh, Peter Plummer in particular, who was uh, at that time the UK importer for Can-Am. 
Now, as I remember, I did hear a story way back in the day of uh, Peter, how he used to uh, pick these bikes up at the dock quayside, and then he would take the bikes uh, out of their crates because he never had the room for them in his small van, and he would then take the bikes straight home and build them outside his house and place them in his front garden. But uh, <laughs> if you were after one of these Can-Ams in the 1970s, then uh, Peter Plummer was certainly the man that you got in touch with. Although these old MX-1s uh, weren't the worst machines of the 1970s because they still had a decent chassis and a very good motor in that uh, Rotax engine, but as I said, they had a very short production run, so it's no wonder that you don't see very many of them these days, as it appears that uh, very few now survive. And although Billy's bike here's uh, not an original example, he still races it on the track, but uh, more importantly for him, he's trying to keep the memory of his late friend Ian Robertson alive, who was extremely quick on this very unique and rare example. Well, there you have it. Uh, nice to see uh, one of these uh, old Can-Ams still uh, taking part in classic racing, a bike that you very seldom see uh, these days, but it's nice to see one still uh, being used uh, as it was intended. Uh, not as rare, of course, as the mighty uh, Black Widow, but uh, nonetheless, nice to see an old Can-Am still on the racetrack. OK, coming up in my next video presentation, we'll be uh, taking a look at this uh, lovely Czechoslovakian uh, CZ Twin Port uh, machine. Now, uh, this is a bike that belongs to Irishman Lee Rook, and uh, this uh, actual bike was put together by another uh, fellow Irishman, Adrian uh, Lappin. So we'll take a look at that uh, lovely CZ when we return uh, in my next uh, video uh, posting. But until then, of course, everybody uh, continue to uh, watch what you're doing out there when you're racing and running about on those old classic uh, dirt bikes. And uh, we'll all get together again very soon to talk about more vintage iron right here on your favourite classic dirt bike TV channel.